the answer to the question everybody wants to know. LeBron, what's your decision? Man, it's very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to be leaving Team Android behind and joining Team Apple. You got the hat to make it official. Well, Apple hat, Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max, natural titanium, one terabyte. I don't know why that reference stuck in my head. I don't even like basketball, even though I have a bunch of jerseys, a bunch of shoes. That uh, little decision interview kind of just stuck out. Yeah, I'm finally making the switch after 15-ish years, and it's gonna be an interesting one. There's probably gonna be a lot of people, a lot of Android watchers, saying uh, I betrayed the squad. Oh man, that makes me think of that little Obi-Wan and Anakin scene. How does that scene go? You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! Anyway, okay, but yeah, 15 years. Been loyal? Well, it's not really loyalty, it's just... These hoes ain't loyal. So basically this video, I'm gonna be talking about why After being a lifelong Android user, I'm finally switching from my Samsung to this iPhone 15 Pro Max. A little bit of background. Basically, I've had a long line of different Androids. Pretty much most of them were Galaxy Samsungs. So this is the S10 Plus. Uh, I think it came out back in 2019. So this is my current phone before my iPhone. And then I had this S7 active. I don't know when this came out, maybe 2016, 2017. This was my phone before that. And then this one is the S6 active. This one's kind of blown up. I think when I was like moving, it kind of like got smashed around. But uh, it wasn't like this when I stopped using it. This was my S6 Active, I think it came out back in 2015. And then the OG of OGs, my little slidey phone. Back when slidey phones were cool, with like an actual physical keyboard. This is the AT&T Quickfire, <laughs> 1.3 megapixels. So you can kind of see how far technology has gone from way back then, I think this came out like late 2000s. So 1.3 megapixels to this uh, iPhone 15 Pro Max, which I think is like 48 megapixels. Yeah, that's my lineage. Oh, I actually forgot. I do have more Samsungs. Um, so there's an S10, the S7, the S6. Then I had an S4, which I can't find. And then I had the OG. Samsung Galaxy S. I tried looking in the attic, but I couldn't find it. So I had one, one, two, three, four, five. Five different galaxies before I switched from Android to this iPhone. Lifelong Android user. Um, finally uh, going over to the dark side, I guess. If you only knew the power of the dark side. No! All right, so probably the biggest and main reason why I switched from Android over to iPhone is that my Android broke. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, like if this thing didn't break, I would still be using it. The screen doesn't bother me, blacked out part. Basically it just spazzes out sometimes and kind of like presses along the side and then it thinks I'm pressing it. This basically annoyed me, like it was functional, but it wasn't functional. And I would always just accidentally call people because um, it would just spaz out and press like where it's blacked out. So the call button is up here on, on Snapchat. So I would always accidentally call people and I would have to tell them like 90% of the time, like it, it would be an accident, I'd be like, my bad. This thing was still working fine. I would still be using Android, you know, nothing beats a working phone, especially if it's a really good one. So I really like this S10 Plus, but unfortunately it had a few too many drops and that's basically why I switched over just because I need a new phone. So one of the compelling things that really convinced me to switch finally was USB-C. That may not sound like a very big deal. You know, it's just one port to another, 
But when you really think about it, it just makes a big difference because one, I already have a whole bunch of different USB-C cables and all that already from my previous Samsung has USB-C, my GoPro, my 360 camera, these all have USB-C, like laptop, pretty much everything really that you can think of. If I got like an iPhone 14 or something like that, it would just be that one thing where I just needed the lightning cable for. And that would just be kind of a waste to be honest. A lot of money trying to get new cables, new adapters, having to carry it around everywhere. That probably was the thing that, you know, convinced me the most. So a little thing, but really big difference. Charging speeds too. It should be a lot faster charging, a lot faster transfer speeds. So that aspect as well is definitely a big thing because I'm always taking a lot of videos, taking a lot of pictures. One more note on like the whole iPhone thing. I seriously hated like that they use their little pr 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 proprietary uh, little plug. It's pretty much just a little cash grab so that you have to buy like their specific uh, cables and uh, little accessories and all that. It's funny because they didn't actually want to put a USB-C. It was kind of just mandated by the European government or some European entity. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have gotten an iPhone to be honest. So shout out to that little European group. I mean, I've kind of been exposed to iPhone. My family has had it. A bunch of my friends have it. I mean, that's kind of a point um, that I'm going to get to next. I've had uh, experiences with iPhone. I used to like borrow my parents' phone all the time. They had the 3GS, iPhone 3GS, like one of the OGs pretty much. So they had this, and then they had the iPhone 4. It's all cracked up and whatnot. I put a skin on it too. So I kind of used this for a little bit as like a iPod, little Wi-Fi texting device when I didn't have like a real working phone. So I used this for a good little while, um, running like, I don't know, some text-free app, basically. That's kind of where my first usage started. So this little iPhone 4. And then my friend, uh, he had this little iPod Touch. I put a skin on this too. You can actually take this off. I'll just take it off so you can see that. Yeah, so this little iPod Touch, uh, this is 16 gigabytes. Wow, a lot of storage. That's my little Apple background, I guess you could say, but like I said, I've never owned an Apple device. I've owned Apple devices, but that was a MacBook and that was a, basically a school gift. All right, so another reason is that the technology finally caught up. I feel like a lot of people are gonna be triggered over that, especially like the Apple fans, but let's be honest, Android has kind of been the ones to innovate. Except for like the first few generations of iPhones, it's kind of hard to debate that iPhone really led the pack in innovation. Uh, pretty much maybe iPhone 4 or 5 and after, it's been all Android you know for as far as like innovation new technology and all that like for example my s10 plus uh, has a lot of features it has you know wireless charging and all that water resistance and an action button this one has well this was a bixby button but it's basically what this little programmable button is on the iphone uh, that's what this is and samsung's have been having that it's been all the way back since this S6 active. If you can see this little blue button right here, this little blue button on the side, I don't know if you can see that. This little blue button on the side is a little programmable button. So you can long press it for one app, short press for another. Basically, it's just like a shortcut, like the, the new button on the iPhone that replaces the little switch all the way back in 2015 and it's barely getting to iPhone. I don't know when like wireless charging finally got to iPhone, but I mean, Android got that first. Fast charging, Android has always been leading the pack. Like I was saying, technology finally caught up and I feel like it's at a good point where I'm satisfied. I have pretty fast charging, wireless charging, really good cameras. 
I feel like that's another debatable point too, as far as like who has the better cameras. Another big thing too, correct me if I'm wrong, iPhones have never had removable storage, expandable storage. Um, no micro SD slot, whereas this, my previous phone, S10 Plus, this has a expandable storage slot up here. So this, this is like the SIM tray and the SD card tray. I don't know what the max capacity SD card is, but I think I have a 128 gigabyte in here and I think the phone is 128 gigabyte. Basically expandable storage, you know, that's always a good thing. You can always upgrade or, you know, swap SD cards if you're running out of space on one. So expandable storage is always a big, was always a big thing for me. Samsung's nowadays, I think it ended maybe after the S20, S21. The new Samsung's don't have expandable storage. So that's definitely one con. It's the same now. It's, bas it's basically the same. Both phones, the new Samsung, not this one obviously, but then say this was like S23, S24, whatever. iPhone, both don't have expandable storage. So I've been a real big customization kind of person. That's another thing that really kept me on Android too is that it's really customizable. Like you can move apps wherever you want. The apps don't just have to be lined up at the top, uh, top to bottom. You can spread them out wherever you want. Like for example, you can see that I lined up all my apps on the left side. Um, that way it's like easier to access with my thumb. And I'm like along the bottom, so it's easier to access along my thumb. With iPhone, you wouldn't be able to do that because it, it forces you to basically basically stack from top to bottom. So, I mean, that's one small thing. It sounds like a small thing, but it's a really big thing to me. You know, just ease of use and customization, widgets and all that. You can add, there's so many things you can add, basically, is what I'm saying. Customization is always and probably will always be for a long, long time a strong suit of Android. But I mean, iPhone is slowly catching up. It's probably not exactly where I want it to be. You know, it probably has a lot more that could be done, but it's better. I mean, I, I could live with it. Like, I could go on forever basically talking about the customization. It should be pretty common knowledge. Like, even iPhone users should acknowledge that Android phones are way customizable. Um, you can, there's so many things you can customize. Like it would just be a super long video if I just talked about every little thing that you could customize. But I'll just leave it at that. Decent customization or getting there. But anyways, one thing that really made me think about iPhone was the ecosystem. If Androids are really good at customization, then iPhones are really good at ecosystem, you know, user friendliness, and basically ease of communication between people. That's kind of my simplification of this, but yeah, that's one thing that kind of convinced me and made me think about for a little while, even before this, about switching to iPhone. You know, iMessage, FaceTime, it's so much easier being able to just video call someone as opposed to like going on like Snapchat video or like WhatsApp, something like third party. Third party app to do all that. It's all just kind of integrated pretty seamlessly too. Um, it's pretty smooth. But uh, iMessage, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of cool effects. Like do so many effects in iMessage, little fireworks and sound effects, make things like disappear, like ghost mode or invisible ink or something. So that's pretty cool. There's games. Like you can just easily play someone in a game, just send them a little iMessage game challenge, whatever. I don't know, I, I always thought that iMessage was pretty cool. And then I don't have it at the moment, but Apple Watches, from what I've seen, it looks like it works really seamlessly um, when I see other people use it. So that always looked pretty cool. So eventually I'll get an Apple Watch. Obviously I don't have one right now. Looking at messages, taking calls. Um, if you get the cellular version, you can just basically just have your watch, that's it. I know Samsung has it, but you know, it seems like Apple works more seamlessly, but I've never seen or really used Samsung, so I can't really speak on that too much. 
Okay, one thing that I always hated about Android, the fact that you can't just text pictures or text videos without losing like 90% of the quality. Like, it just makes it so hard to send people videos and send people pictures without having it lose resolution and quality. So, I mean, that's one thing that just really annoyed me. I feel like I should make a list about things that I didn't like about Android. Cause I mean, I did like Android. I do like Android. I do miss it a little bit. i uh, use this a little bit so far, but I kind of miss it sometimes. It'll just take some getting used to pretty much. Yeah, sending messages and videos on iPhone is a lot easier. AirDrop is a really big thing. That's pretty cool. Um, I know Samsung has similar stuff. You can't just text someone a video, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, being able to text and send videos and pictures is so much easier. You don't have to like, like upload it to Google Drive or anything like that. That's a really big thing though. It's okay, all of these stuff probably sound really small, but they are pretty big. Like, oh, you're out with friends and stuff and you're the one taking pictures. If you have Android, then you can't, you can't really send it through text. Otherwise, it'll just look like a little blurry little blob of a video. The last reason, and it's kind of like a dumb reason, but it's, well, it's dumb, but it's not dumb. Titanium. I don't know. I just love titanium. Like, I don't think you understand how much I love titanium. I love titanium so much that when I was a kid, we were in science class and um, I had this weird obsession with the periodic table. I don't know why, um, but I did. My favorite element was titanium. So I would ask my science teacher like, oh, when do we get to, you know, do a project on the periodic table and all that. And basically, long story short, like I pre-reserved the element titanium way in advance so that I could do a project on it. Yeah, just to give you an idea of how much I love titanium. It's just uh, an amazing element. But uh, yeah, full titanium, and this is the natural titanium. A nice little, I don't know, kind of a grayish, slight tannish tone. I don't know if the lighting is really doing justice, but I like it. I love titanium. So in summary, that's pretty much the reasons why I switched from Android over to iPhone. You know, I've always thought about it, contemplated slightly, not as much until now. I'm open to trying it. I'm open to, you know, embracing a new little ecosystem and culture. But, you know, I think I'll be pleasantly surprised. Maybe I'll do like an update video on things I do like, things I don't like, one versus the other. Because, I mean, it's a big deal. My life has pretty much revolved around Android and Samsung for the most part. And then now I'm just switching things up a lot. Things can be a lot different, for sure. Uh, that's pretty much the end of the video. Uh, if you watched till the end, thank you guys, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.